Holy moly, the noise is phenomenal and the spray coming in through the slot is unbelievable. It's 7 o'clock in the morning and it is force 10 here in the marina. Oh my lord, I've never seen that before. new camera mounts has arrived today uh, and this is the one that we're going to put on um, our arch so that we can show um, you everything but um, it looks good and so we're going to set up the cam uh, the cameras uh, so that we can hopefully film inside the cockpit so <laughs> let's get on with it shall we Note to self, turn brightness up before commencing. <laughs> Warning, this will damage your eyes. No, it won't. <laughs> so, mount one is on. So, I should be in view of both of these now. And you should be in view of that one. Yeah. Our testing was interrupted by visitors. Transatlantic single-handed yachtsman Gary Crothers and his friend Ken. We had a socially distanced chat and then it was back to work. Ah. Having fun? Oh yeah. It's a job we've been meaning to do for a long time. Because it just gets greasy. Well, not greasy. It is greasy. Dirty. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with just servicing it and getting rid of all the dirt and just checking it out. Yep. Yeah, well Beverly's doing her winch now. <laughs> I'm a winch wench! <laughs> you are a winch wench! She's a winch wench! She's a winch wench. But what we've got here is we've got top, middle and bottom just so that we know where all the bits go. Well, that's a lot quieter and that's one winch down another three to go but um yeah we'll video and at one of the winches properly but at least we've at least started on cleaning the winches out yeah. Holy the noise is phenomenal and the spray coming in through the slot is unbelievable. It's 7 o'clock in the morning and it is force 10 here in the marina. Oh my lord, I've never seen that before. Whoa! Well, it's a windy day in Carrick, there's no doubt about it. Well, I hope you can hear me over the racket because <laughs> it is a total racket today. Um, the noise is tremendous and um, let's do a little pan around. Let you have a look. But everything's in motion. It's uh, Force 10 <laughs> and I'm in the shelter of a marina. 
not that you would know. <laughs> so this is what it's like <laughs> when it all goes to, I don't know, it all goes to hell, I suppose. <laughs> now all I've got to do, this is the calm bit of the marina. So now all I've got to do is walk up to the bouncy bit of the marina, which is over that way. So we'll go and do that. In case anybody's wondering why I'm out here in this stuff, it's uh, it's sad truth of boat life. You've got to be very careful how quickly you fill your sewage tank. Uh, some days you can fill it quicker than others. And one, whoa, <laughs> I'm staggering like a drunk here. I'll just stop for a minute. Ah, oh dear. One quick way to fill your sewage tank is to put lots of poop into it. Uh, basically a poop will fill up your tank about five or ten times quicker than doing, well, piddles. So, for those sort of things we've got to go up to the main toilets in the marina, which is why I'm out here in this rubbish. <laughs> oh lordy. And yeah, I'm dressed for bear. I've got all my weather gear on. This is what I was wearing this morning when I had to go out and do things for the boat. And you can see over that way we got pretty good waves coming in. I'll get some shots of that for you. But I think it's the roughest I've ever seen Belfast Lock. It's absolutely dreadful out there. <sighs> and I'm on the bouncy pontoons. Woo! -hoo! Staggering like a trunk. <laughs> oh dear. I'll, uh, we actually have waves inside the marina, would you believe it? Um, I don't know how well that will come out behind me. Or even this. Oh dear, I think the storm season has arrived, so there are people standing around looking at their boats, looking at their lines, inspecting things, and you know what, I don't blame them one bit because I'm about to do the same. I'll look at a couple of other people's boats, make sure they're okay, drop them an email, that sort of thing if there's a problem, but uh, it's time to get on with it really. So where are we Beverly? Well, we're at Portmuck, uh, a place we've sailed past several times and we <laughs> usually sail straight past because it's very rocky and I don't really fancy coming in, don't see the point. But it's renowned for having fossils and things. Now, it's been a long time since I did a fossil hunting here, but we've got these limestone things which have got strange wear patterns and I've whacked this one with a piece of flint, of which there are plenty about. And you can see that whether it's organisms causing this or whatever, they're burrowing in whatever they're doing. But we also find this Ooh. little rock here, which appears to have what looks like shells embedded in it. So you can just see one just here. So that might well be a fossil. You know, it'd be hard to say without actually breaking the rock open. Um, you know, just one of those things. The other thing that's about this area and Northern Ireland was famous for it in pre for prehistoric times, is flint. Uh, back in the Stone Age, flint was like a commodity item. I mean, people made arrowheads and things in Rathen Island, and they sailed all the way down to France to barter or sell them or whatever it was they did in those days. And all that distance for flint arrowheads. Because right here, flint is so common that you can, quite literally, I'll deal with that in the edit. You can quite literally pick gold off the streets if this is your currency. If flint was your currency. Yeah, but I can smell the burning from the, the sparks already. It's incredible. Just a couple of and that bit there flaked off. And okay, I'm no flint napper, but there's my arrowhead. Way hey, we are in business. Roll on the money. We'll sell this for a sack of potatoes. <laughs> Well, 
these sort of mid grey rocks, whatever they are, um, they seem to be good for the fossil things because I'm pretty darn sure that these are some sort of shells embedded in it. Oh, yes, I can see them. Yeah. Uh, we've got the Isle of Muck over here and we've sailed past this many many times and it's notorious for having a rather nasty set of rips and races just on the seaward side so we tend to stay about a mile mile and a half out from this place but up over that side there there's a causeway that connects the two and at low tide you can go across and I'm told that if you have a very shallow draft boat you can actually come through here but Apart from the fact that that's actually a high tide yeah, no, you can use the causeway at low tide, but if you have a, if you have a shallow draft boat, you can come through when the causeway is covered, obviously high tide. Yeah. Um, I would not bring Salty Lass through there, no matter how much you paid me to do so. <laughs> um, but the area around this can be quite nasty and lumpy. Um, there's a few white caps showing over that way, which I can see out to sea, and the maidens are up that way, and I can see white caps between the maidens. So... Um, North Channel's not looking as bad as I thought it would today. Still don't want to go out there though. Yeah, that's because the uh, wind is coming from the south at the moment. That's right? because the wind is coming from my back that way. Yeah. And if you show, turn the camera around in a minute, you'll be able to see the wind patterns as they ruffle out to sea and they run away from us here on the land, um, out that way towards Scotland. But um, yeah, it's been also a year since I've been back here. I was here, here as a kid. Um, school came here for geography and geology and things like that and there's fossils on all these beaches if you can just dig them out so the biggest challenge in port muck to be honest is getting back out of the place because the hill to get out of here is one in six and the last time i was here my gearbox nearly went ping so i'm hoping this time i have an easier time of it So what we need to do, you've got this unscrewed, yeah? Yes, I've got that unscrewed. So what you do is you lift the whole bell housing up. Jump! Okay. <laughs> right, and that comes off now. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> to be honest, this is a job where you're very scared to do it. It's like, oh my God, I've got to do the winches. And they're winches, they're so important. They are very important, but you've got an apprehension level that's quite a lot higher than the actual job's re re needs. It's not that difficult to do the job. It's just a case of uh, marking where everything goes, you know. Um, Is it like my old belief that no gearbox in a car can ever work because you can't have that many cogs in close proximity and have anything move. Yeah, it must be something like that. But as I say, it's just a job I was incredibly apprehensive to do. Uh, but realistically, you know, once you've got a, a bit of uh, white spirit, a, a toothbrush... And some grease. And some grease. You're good to go, really. You're good to go, really. Um, that's, that's really it. It's just a case of doing it more than anything else. Well, once you've cleaned it, um, it's just a case of um, putting it all back together again. Um, and hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, next week you'll see us testing it. We'll see, but anyway. Okay, so it's the day after the storm and I'm glad to report that 
all is good. Salty last one he sustained minor damage in the storm. Um, you can see that the uh, the training wheels have got they should be straight. They're bent at an angle. That's basically because our springs, which you can see behind me here, um, during the storm they stretched so much that those wheels came in contact with the pontoon. And I mean, you can see that they're a good distance out. They're they're not even close. It must be at least half a meter there. Um, but we had double springs on. The springs are stretchy because we like stretchy ropes. The white ropes that you see here are nylon, so they're very, very stretchy. And the blue lines that you see are polyester, which have no stretch. The polyester just there is back up in case the nylon parts. That's all they are. Um, but it's the nylon we prefer because we find that the boat rides much, much better in a slip if you have the nylons on. So um, that is all done. I've got to get some stainless steel rod for the uh, the training wheels and basically reset them. It's not a big job. The rod costs a couple of pounds and it'll take me an hour of my time to fix that. So I'm not overly worried about it. But no damage to the cleats, no damage to the boat, no damage to the boom or the mast or the rigging or anything like that. So we've come through the storm, I'm glad to say. And it's just a case now of just taking off these extra lines because there's no need for them at this point. And um, that's it. So... Thankfully, the storm's behind us. Hopefully, we don't have any more of them. But knowing where we are in the time of year, I'm sure we will. <laughs>